welcome to Eden Hope Academy. We are on Psycho 1, week number 12, and I'm so glad that you're with us. So get your books out, give them a wiggle, and let's get started. So for our Bible this week, let's throw it up. So the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, this is what the Lord says, let my people go so that we they may worship him. Exodus 8, 1. And down below, it says that draw a picture of Pharaoh hearing Moses say that the slave spirit thinks he owns should be released. So what do you think his face looked like? Do you think he was like, oh yeah, I'll let them go? Or do you think he was like, what are you talking about, Moses? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so let's go back in history just a little bit. Boop, 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 boop. And remember we had Abraham, who is the father of Isaac, who is the father of Jacob, who was the father of Joseph, who saved the Israelite people. Remember, he had this, the coat of many colors, and then he was sold into slavery, and then he was a slave, and then he was jailed, and then he interpreted dreams, saying that they came from God. And so he saved all of the Egyptians, and he also saved his father's household. So when he did that, Pharaoh was so pleased with Moses. Or, sorry, with um, Jake, with sorry, with Joseph, and he wanted to bless Joseph, and so he said, bring all of your family here, and we will give them a beautiful place to live, and they can live here in Egypt, and they can prosper, and they can eat in Egypt, and they will be fine in Egypt, and so all of Joseph's family came to Egypt. Now, 500 years passed, and do you know what happened? It was shocking, yeah. The Israelites became the slaves of the Egyptians. Over those years, they forgot that it was Joseph who saved them. They totally forgot, totally not grateful. Who does that sound like? Does that sound like Lot, maybe? It sounded like Lot to me. They totally forgot, and they, they treated, they, the, the Israelites were slaves. And so there were a lot of things about slavery that they incorporated into the Israelite life. One of those things was the Israelites could not sit when they ate. They had to stand when they ate. They weren't allowed to... Um, they, they were told um, what they could do at every time. They were told what they, were, what they could and couldn't do. They were told everything about their lives. And they were treated extremely harshly as slaves. They were hurt many times by the Egyptians. And so the Egyptians decided that they would, that they would hurt every one of the Israelite little boys who were born. And Moses' mom was really scared for him. So she put him in a basket and she put tar around the bottom of this basket, and she let him go in the Nile River near where some Egyptian princesses were bathing. And one of them saw the basket and told her servants to go get that basket, and she took Moses, even though he was Hebrew, and she raised him as her own. And then she not only did that, but she that Moses' sister was nearby, and she called out that she knew someone who could help her raise no, Moses, and so they allowed his own mother to come and raise him for a couple of years. Now, what does that tell you? What did his mother do? His mother trusted God, and she let him go. And then what did God do? God gave him back to her for a couple of years. That is one of the most beautiful parts of the Bible to me. And so she did this. Moses was raised in Pharaoh's household. Moses just thought he was one of the Egyptians. He went a long life. He was rich. He had sports that he could do. He, had, he, he was one of Pharaoh's sons. He could pretty much do anything he wanted to do. And then one day, he realized someone told him that he was actually a Hebrew. And he saw some Hebrew people being, being hurt. And so he went over and he hurt the Egyptian guards very, very badly. And what tree was he standing under then? When he decided, oh, I'm going to solve this problem. Mm, yeah, it's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? He didn't wait for God because he hadn't learned about God yet. And so he, he knew that he'd get in big, bad trouble with Pharaoh. And so he took off. And he walked all the way across the desert. God sustained him walking across this desert. And when he got to the other side, guess what? There was a man named Jethro there, and Jethro had a beautiful daughter whom Moses married, and Jethro had 
the truth of the Lord in him, and he taught Moses about God. And eventually, Moses was humble enough, much later in his life, he was humble enough. Now, who's a sound like again? Sound like Joseph to you? Yeah, it's the same patterns again and again in the Bible. Moses was humble enough to go back and actually lead his people out of Egypt. It's an amazing story. But he had to be humbled first, and he had to decide, which tree am I going to sit under? And when he finally was willing to sit under the tree of life, then God could use him. When he was finally humble, God could use him. So here it says, um, oh, so that was a long way to explain just the Bible, wasn't it? Okay, so let's go into history. Let's throw it up. Oh, classical Crete marked the beginning of Greece. Crete is an island. Massive architecture with indoor plumbing, airflow control, subterranean sewers, that means underground, and sophisticated laws prove the Greeks were an advanced culture. Now we keep on hearing about plumbing, indoor plumbing, sewer systems, city planning, laws that were fair for people, all of that. That's amazing. The time of Moses, all of those things were happening and had happened in India and Egypt and now in Greece, in classical Greece at Crete. Amazing stuff was going on during that time period. A lot of times we're taught, at least when I was a kid, we were taught that, you know, that we just got smarter over time. And now that I'm an adult, I realize that wasn't really all that true. People were brilliant back then. They just didn't know as much about it when I was growing up. Okay, so Moses pleaded with God to choose someone else. We're in Lincoln, so I want you to draw a classical Crete city right here. And while I'm talking, Moses pleaded with God to choose someone else to help Jacob's descendants. Moses was terrified to go back to Pharaoh's house and speak for God. This was Moses' purpose, however, and God had prepared Moses perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. Now, sometimes when God tells us to do stuff, we really are terrified. And do you know what God did? Moses was like, I can't do it. I'm not a good speaker. When God told him to go back and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. And so God said, I'm going to give you your brother Aaron to help you out. You've got a brother. He's going to help you. The sister's name was Miriam, who I talked about before, who told the mom to come. And, um, and so his brother Aaron helped him out. How is God preparing you? Can you talk to your mom and dad about ways that God is preparing you for your purpose? What are some of the things that you go through that now you can look at and say, hmm, I think maybe God's preparing me in this way. And did Moses' preparations look like God's destiny for him? Did having to go to a remote village far away and tend sheep for 40 years sound like it was God's destiny for someone who had been a great son of Pharaoh? I wouldn't think so. I would think some of that time he'd be going, oh, I wish I could go back and just be served and have people feed me grapes and ride my horses and stuff like that. Someone, you know, sometimes you might think that way, but God was using this time in the wilderness to train Moses for 40 years so that he could be most useful to God. Okay, science. Ooh, this is so cool. I want you to go out and look for examples of this a little bit later, okay? So I'm going to throw it up, and it's the Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers where a number is found by adding the two numbers starting with 0 and 1. The sequence goes 0, and then you add the two numbers. So 0 um, plus 1 is 1, and then the two numbers before, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13. So do you get that? You just add the two numbers before it and it's a sequence. But it's all over nature. This is just proof that a creator created everything in nature. Because there's no way you could have a mathematical equation for a flower and a snail and so many other things in nature if it wasn't created that way. And so there's some examples of these below, a pine cone and a snail and a flower. And I want you to find other examples of this in your yard. And the way that you can tell is see how like in the sunflower it goes from tiny, tiny, and then it 
then it keeps going out in greater numbers until you've got the flower petals on the outside. That's an example of it. So open your eyes to see the sequence because it is really good. It's really cool. And it's just further proof that a loving God created you and has a purpose for you in this world. That's so cool. All right, so geography. The Israelites walked from Goshen to Migdal, Mara and Mount Sinai, the wilderness of Param, and finally to Jericho. Okay, so now the rest of this story, because it's really cool, and you're going to see it other places, but it's a really great story. So then Moses goes to Pharaoh and says, let my people go. And Pharaoh goes, no. And so God brings seven plagues on to Pharaoh. And these are not good things that happen. And so one plague after another, and finally Pharaoh is like, just get out, just get out, just take all of your slaves and go. But the Egyptians were so glad to see them go that they gave them gifts. And that's how they had, um, they had plenty to start out with in their new land because they'd been given so many expensive gifts from the Egyptian people. And so they left, and they started going, they crossed the Red Sea, which you're going to learn about, which is a miracle in and of itself. And just recently, do you know what they've discovered? They've discovered pieces of Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea, just like the Bible said happened. Amazing. Again, proof that the Bible is the word of God and it's accurate. So they go across the Red Sea. They have a pillar of light in front of them. You're going to see all this in the videos. They have a pillar of light in front of them and they follow it. And then they send in two spies and they come back and the spy, two of the spies, they send in 12 spies. Two of the spies come back, and they tell them the exact truth, and do they believe them? No. So they wind up in the desert for 40 years. Now this 40 is a really important number in the Bible, because we'll learn later next year that Jesus was in the desert for 40 days, that Moses was was tried, or, you know, he was in the wilderness for 40 years, the, the um, Israelites walked around for 40 years, or had to stay in the wilderness for 40 years. And there's so many 40s in the Bible that that's a number that God has as a number of complete maturity many times in the Bible. All right, so you're going to do... Um, so basically, I just want you to kind of draw some of this. So I want you to draw the Red Sea. The Red Sea always makes me think of a, of a um, snail with little antlers coming out. Um, so the Red Sea, the Nile River, remember the Nile River flows up the Mediterranean Sea, and then you can just draw some dots to show that they walked. And that's all you have to do in geography. So that's it. I can't wait for you to learn about Moses and crossing the Red Sea and the plagues in Egypt and, and Crete and Greece this week. It's going to be so awesome to hear you during leadership training class. And I will see you next week. See you later. Bye-bye.